Hello and welcome to another episode of Bearing the List, my ongoing series where I use Tier Maker, who are not a sponsor, but if they'd like to be, get at me, Tier Maker. Let's talk this out. Let's figure this thing. Anyway, I use Tier Maker to um, to take some lists that exist there. Maybe I've created a couple of my own. Maybe I'll do that again in the future. I don't know. Let me know in the comments if there's something you'd like me to do, because maybe if there isn't a tier for it, I'll do it myself. But uh, I cover all kinds of things, like wrestling and food, and uh, this last episode was about dog breeds, and this one is about anime characters, which I've done before, and I will surely do again. We are going to rank, using Tier Maker, all of the characters in the anime New Game. Uh, New Game exists uh, as two uh, seasons of anime, uh, Series 1, New Game with one exclamation point. Season two, new game uh, with two exclamation points. They did not call it new game plus. They screwed up. There's an OVA. That's fine. Uh, it is a lovely show. If you haven't seen new game, it's a great slice of life about a small video game studio that just so happens to only feature women. In fact, there is a character, uh, Yoon's younger brother, has a couple lines in the show. And then there's like a Power Ranger at one point. Power Ranger-like character who is male uh, in one episode, and that's like basically it. It's just a bunch of ladies. It's gay as hell. It is both, and it is both heavily implied gay as hell and actually gay as hell. Uh, so there is subtext, and then there's also just text, which is rad and great. Um, it's a lovely show. And I'm going to rank these characters. Now, you're like, Pat, are you just going to put all of them in S rank? No. At least one of these characters is, I don't, I haven't decided where she's going to go, but there's one character in the show that like, even by the end of her, of the season that she was in, I was like, she's a season two character. I was like, all right, fine. All right, fine. Uh, Alba. Let's start with our main character. We're in alphabetical order here. Um, the person that made this, uh, I don't know anything about Seventh Disaster. They're, I don't know anything about them, except, hey, great job setting this up. You can see all the characters' faces. You put their names there. You make it very easy. Uh, tier Maker, have hover text. I would love to be able to hover over a character, uh, an image, and have something and text appear. I would do that. I'd go and edit other people's to make it easier. Let's do that. Uh, Alba. Alba is S tier. She's our main character. She is the protagonist, but she's lovely. She's trying really hard. Uh, she's fulfilling her dream of working for a video game studio, and she's working for the person that got her into games that made her want to do this work. Um, and she's struggling, and she's figuring things out, and she's got interpersonal relationships that she's keeping up with, and work relationships, and she's trying to figure out how to be a good employee and learn, and then also, like, deal with heartache, uh, disappointment, and push for a thing. She's cute and fun. There's a devilish side to her that I love that, like, she's not the most, she's not that bland. She's got personality between, like, her little song she does on occasion, or, like, her, her uh, sleeping bag, a uh, bear sleeping bag that's just adorable, and, like, yeah, her relationship with Nene and her friendship with Ifumi and, and the other people that she's working with and trying to, like, you know, oh, I, I love her back and forth with Ifumi where she's, like, recognizes that she can mess with her a little bit like she does with uh, uh, Hotoru and, and Nene, her her best friends. And she's like, oh, I could I could jab at you a little bit, huh? I like that. I like the devil side, devil side of her. Not devil side, devil side of her. Um... And she's adorable and great. She's a great main character. You're rooting for Alba the whole time. And that's awesome. Christina. Now, towards the end of season two, Christina had a bit of a bump up, in my opinion. She was just kind of there. She was necessary. You know, she's like working for the major publisher and doing her best. And she's got to be the, you know, she... In a world full of characters who seem to be odd otaku who maybe get things done, she's got to be like the adult. There was more personality. In fact, she doesn't like to be touched that much. Uh, and 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 the distance that she's keeping with people. Uh, so I come to appreciate her. So I'm going to put her in B. Uh, she didn't get up to A. 
But up until the end of that season, I would have done lower. Hajime. Oh, man. Uh, I'm just going to reference things that happen in this show a bunch. Hajime is great. Uh, you learn a lot more as the show goes on. Um, and she definitely, like... I don't think she bumps herself up to S rank, but she's definitely A rank. Whereas after before season two, I don't know if I would have put her in A rank um, because she seems a little flighty, but she's so passionate about things she loves. Uh, I like that she is on the animation team, but sits with the designers uh, and that that benefits all of them. Um, and uh, her relationship with Yoon is so fun and they're kind of opposite tracked uh, thing. And then finding out, Big revelation, uh, she used to be about dressing up and looking pretty and looking fashionable. And Yoon didn't do that. She, she put that on to, to be a professional. And so they kind of like switched their high school personalities for their real personalities. Um, and that's cool. That's really fun. Uh, yeah, Hajime hid her otaku nature. Um, but yeah, their interplay is really fun. The dandy scene and with Nene coming in, the fact that Yoon and Hajime have dandy, uh, loving dandy, uh, the character, the fictional character in common. I love that so much. But there, that she's A. Um, uh, Hazuki is tough, right? Uh, there's a point where we want to hear answers from her. Why does she only hire women? Uh, what's her game? Does she play games? Is she an otaku? I mean, she likes maid cafe stuff. Is she just a lady loving, maybe bit of a pervert weirdo? She likes, uh, well, I mean, she likes, uh, uh, you know, uh, if we may smile and likes pretty girls. What's the, what's her fucking deal? I'm putting her in B, but like, she's got a cool cat. That's it. She got a cool big cat. That keeps you in B. I'm watching you. You also, I would expect her to further the plot more. She doesn't further the plot more. It's probably because Rin is there that we don't need her to come in. Um, Fume, S tier. Uh, and look, we're going to talk about the canon relationship. There's only one canon relationship in the show, and there's a bunch of subtext and opinions about characters that seem to be in loving relationships with one another or on the verge of one. Uh, now, I know there are people out there they are going to say Alba and Nene are a match made in heaven and the opposite tracks in their relationship, but that is just a friendship that may that is not a relationship and Alba and Ifumi are my, are my OTP, my one true pairing for the show uh, because they play off each so so well, uh, and they're just fun. And if look, I got Hifumi has, uh, she's trying so hard. Like, this is an introvert who is put in charge of a team of people that that is trying to rally her. You know, like the new employees and try to be a good senpai and like do all the things she needs to do to like have fulfillment in her work. And she's an otaku and she loves cosplay and she loves like embodying a character and also she's like so excited that people are enjoying the things that she's doing uh and she's like made lasting friendships um and she's has growth and she wants to grow even more and then this show doesn't really this show does a lot with Alba becoming a better employee but it doesn't it also has this Hifume's like little side story um if she was the main character, she might get a little annoying, but she's not the main character. I mean, she's us here. She's the fucking best. So excited for her. Uh, Hotoru. Hotoru is important to the story because she is the childhood friend that Nene and Alba made that encouraged Alba to become an artist. Now, Hotoru is clearly the better artist and maybe is, you know, she's going to grad school in another country. She's probably definitely definitely jealous of Alba and probably and also not probably also dismissive she's definitely dismissive of Alba uh and Alba's work uh 
she's important to where the show goes, but not. I I wouldn't even put her in his character. Like I, I the manga, I'm sure there's like manga stuff that's like flashbacks to them in high school that really gets into it. I don't really have that as as someone who's just watched the anime. So maybe manga fans are like, no, you gotta read the thing in their art club and all this stuff. I don't have that. So she's our C. I don't know how many C's they're gonna be, but that's one of them. Co. She sings a song about a bear at one point, the Kuma song, and she's really important to the show and great and fun and just like, she also grows as a person and becomes better and strives and is making up for uh, stuff that went wrong. Not only the mistakes, but things went wrong in the past. She's, she's you know, working on it. Uh, and yeah. In a perfect world, she would understand uh, uh, um, Rin's feelings immediately, and it wouldn't be a problem. It gets where it needs to be. Uh, they, she and Rin are the official couple. They are official uh, lovebirds, as they are called. Uh, and it's great, and she's great. And she's going off to do even better and learn even more. Um, she's cool and fun and like a good boss when she needs to be a good boss and a bad boss a lot of the time and enjoyable. Uh, Momo. So Momo should, I do not generally enjoy late additions to an anime. Momo and, uh, 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 Nurumi come in season two. Uh, new game, you know, two exclamation points. I'm not thrilled with them coming in. I I don't like how competitive she is with Alba. Um, I don't get her. I get that we're supposed to look at Momo and Nurumi and see Alba, another version of Alba and, and Nene. We're supposed to see that. I don't really see it. Uh, I like her more as it goes on. I do like that she's just like oddly competitive with Alba because it we're not gonna we didn't get really to see Alba be uh you know an older person at the company had been there a year giving her helping we don't really see that in many ways is um more talented uh, or, or has more practical experience uh than Alba so we don't really see that um so I'm gonna put Momo in B and Narumi also put in B. Well, Momo literally jumped down to C. Uh, you know what? Yeah, M Momo's in C. I still don't want to deal with her. Uh, Narumi's in B. Narumi doesn't really have a lot going on. I think Narumi thinking that Nene didn't work hard and then finding out that Nene does work hard uh, and was was doing things like, was actually doing things well and they learned from each other. I think it's kind of interesting because she just thinks that Oh, Nene got this job because of her internship. Uh, and not that she works really hard. So, also, I like that Nuri is just like, I'm the older sister type uh, to Momo. I kind of like that. It's a fun little play on there. But she's also like, I don't. I really didn't need either of these characters in season two. I would have liked just what they were doing with it. Uh, Nene. What's up, Nene? Uh, I'm going to put you at A. So, she's a really annoying character. The dandy stuff is really fun. She's cool in some spots. I really like her with Umiko. I really like that pairing. Especially, like, let me feed you when their role is a little reversed. I think that's really fun. Uh, I think their interpersonal, their playing together is fun. Uh, I like that she worked hard. And then she tried to better herself with, like, she wasn't there just to be with her friend she was there to to when she figured it out like oh i can be part of the team and I, I can contribute this isn't just a little job where i can go to lunch with my friend like i can do this and and she's trying to like learn uh uh to become maybe a programmer i think it's great so i'm putting her an a she's annoying she, so she's not s tier because she's still annoying uh rin is joining her in a tier 
Rin is important. Uh, the Rin co interplay, I think, is super important, and I think it's like uh, really plays up their relationship very well. So I think that's great, um, and I think that like they're fun characters uh, to play off one another. Uh, her like being her frustrations with Ko, her light uh, clearly in love with Ko, and trying to understand that. You know, there's boyfriend. There's the, like, well, I don't you. What, what's your boyfriend like? Kind of like accusations going on in there, which I think is fun. Also, drunk Rin is pretty adorable. Or you know, having a few drinks, Rin pretty great. Oh uh, man, where this this video is going? Uh, wow, I got a lot to say about new game. If you haven't watched new game, if you watched this far in the video, thanks so much. Uh, Umiko. So Umiko's fucking tough, man. That's a tough one. Umiko. That's tough. She, I keep saying that's tough. So I apologize for saying that's tough. Um, I'm going to do this. So that way we get our pairings together. Get some more pairings. They at least look, look, they're at least near each other. So Umiko is tough because she is on the one hand, uh, I like her, like, don't call me that name, call me this name, her assertiveness, she gets the job done. I don't like that she shoots people with, uh, you know, plastic BB guns. I don't love that. I do like that, uh, um, that she's willing to, like, admit her faults and her little interactions with Fumi, I think, are f pretty fun. Um, that she just wants the job to get done. Her relationship with Nene is very fun. I do, you know, I think those two... Uh, I would, you know, those those are a pair. All right. Oh, well, so we'll do this. We're going to do this here so that we can do that. Or when we got to do, I don't know how to do this. All right. We'll do this. There we go. So we can put Umiko there. That's how we do that. I'm putting Umiko would be, it's just the gun thing. It's just a trait I don't love. And they go to the well with it too much. Like her gifts of here, here's your gift. And it's a casing oh if you'd like to do paintball with us like eh, i just don't love that trait i do love that she has the freedom to enjoy it that she's a gun otaku and that's okay and no one's like eh, uh yeah so i appreciate that yoon so yoon is tough uh oh yeah i got these pairing things all wrong now i can't really we'll do that there we go i don't know why i care about this stuff so yoon is tough because uh, I didn't really care. She was just there. I, I kind of liked her like uh, she's the professional, you know, put together character. You know, she's got her younger brother and sister and she cares a lot about them. And that's fun. And then the more you saw her relationship with uh, Hajime, uh, the more I liked her. And then finding out that she's like, Oh, well, I'm going to be professional. I'm going to this job. I'm going to start looking like this. And she, like, read the magazines and all that. And that's not necessarily her, but it is, but it is actually is kind of also is her. Like, I like that. Um, I like when she's flustered and she's having fun and she's with, uh, you know, as I said, there are subtext couples. Hajime and Yoon are clearly subject uh, subtext couple. They are definitely a pair. Um so, because of season two, season one, B tier. Season two, I'm going with A. Uh, now that's messed up. Dang, dang it, dang it, dang it. So that's also going to mess it up. Everything is messed up. I can't put my couples near each other. Now, Ko, you, and Yoon are messed up. And I can't get that right. Because uh, I got to have this right with. Well, I can do this. And then this. There we go. Okay. But then Alba's not with Tafume. This isn't not important. This whole, what am I doing? Because then we got Alba and, and Nene there. That's fine. Uh, this is not important and does not matter. So don't worry about what I'm doing right now. Because I'm done with the, this video. It's like, I'm in a weird spot. Anyway, leave a comment if you think that Momo is actually B tier and I'm a dummy. Uh, if you think that... Hafume is overrated. You can get the fuck out of here. I don't need that shit. Uh, let me know in the comments below if you'd like to see anything else. Uh, hey, if also, if you want to watch New Game, uh, it's on Crunchyroll. Let me know your thoughts on that show. I think it's lovely. It's 
a, a very underrated slice of life uh, show because I think it's just cute and fun. And uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. And I'll see you on the next Bearing the List. Uh, goodbye.